If your approach to sponsorship is focused on sending gold, silver, bronze packages to potential sponsors, listing assets in grid format, and asking for sponsorship dollars before you've even met with a sponsor, then this video is for you, where I'm going to talk all about how to offer real value to your sponsors. Check it out. I think a lot of properties and sponsorship opportunities think of sponsorship as the art of sending sponsorship packages to people who never asked for them, which is a great way to get your sponsorship proposal thrown immediately into the garbage. In this video, I'm going to talk all about how to offer real value to a sponsor. And I can tell you right now, it has nothing to do with what you put on page 36 of your sponsorship proposal. If you like this kind of content, you want me to keep making free sponsorship videos available, do me a favor, hit the thumbs up button, hit the subscribe button, and click the bell icon so that you never miss another video. If you believe that your audience basically amounts to people who like what you do, then you're actually in big trouble. People are more than just one thing. If you have a music festival or a nonprofit, yes, of course, the people, your audience, your database, is made up of people who like what you do or believe in your mission or like the type of music or the type of food you serve. But that's not all they are. And sponsors know it and they expect you to know it too. How can you know who your audience is? By conducting proper audience research. Remember that sponsorship is nothing more than audience and access to audience. So if your approach to sponsorship is here's a grid of things you can buy to get in front of people who like what we do, you are not offering real value to sponsors. What does real value look like? It looks like 25 plus data points on your audience. It looks like multiple avatars or buyer personas in your audience database. And it looks like opportunities for a sponsor to connect with your audience. Now, if you don't know who your audience is, you need to figure it out before you approach sponsors. Because without audience data, you simply do not have a sponsorship opportunity. If you want to offer value to your sponsors or your potential sponsors, you want to start with a discovery meeting, a sales meeting, not start with a sponsorship proposal. Going in proposal first is a terrible way to add value to your sponsors. After all, you have absolutely no idea what audience segments they're interested in, what activations they would like to buy. You have no idea what their budget is. When you go in proposal first, you make a whole bunch of assumptions. When you go in discovery first, you tell your sponsor that you care about them and their needs first, and that you want to learn what they're interested in. You want to learn about their marketing goals before you put a proposal in front of them. Real value means that you start with a discovery session with your potential sponsors. If you want to add real value to your sponsors, you will customize every single sponsorship package you send out the door. Everything that a sponsor receives from you should be customized based just on their needs. You do not want to be sending out stock sponsorship packages with grids and levels and values to your sponsors. Instead, put in the time to learn about the sponsor, put in the time to do discovery first, and then write them a custom proposal based on what you've discussed. If your sponsorship proposals are not getting at least a 60% close rate, you're doing something wrong. And usually it's that you're not customizing. The thing about customizing is that, well, it's a lot of work, but here's a hack. Instead of you trying to come up with every single activation idea for your audience and your sponsor all on your own, co-create activations with your sponsor. Do it in the discovery meeting. Find out from the sponsor what makes their target market buy. Find out from your sponsor what they want to do with your audience to get them to buy, to get them to give up an email address, to get them to visit their website or test their product. And then during this brainstorm session, come up with activation ideas with your sponsor. The burden is not on you to come up with all of these great creative activation ideas. The burden is actually on you and the sponsor to come up with ideas together. It's up to you to deliver on these ideas, but 
you want to co-create these activation ideas with your sponsors. Not only does co-creating activation ideas save you an awful lot of time and energy, but it also leads to a much higher close rate and you can charge a premium when you do this. The best value you can give to a sponsor is the gift of not wasting their time or treating them like an ATM. It does not feel good to be treated this way. You sending sponsors unsolicited sponsorship packages asking for money before you've even spoken to them is not treating them with the respect that they deserve. And it's not putting you in a position of authority. And the last thing is it's a tremendous waste of their time. The idea that they're going to sit down and read through your proposal cover to cover just because you sent it to them is incorrect. It's not going to happen. Have a quick discovery meeting with them first. Co-create activations. Create a custom proposal that only contains the information they actually need to see and let them spend five minutes reading a proposal that confirms everything you've discussed. Rather than sending them a sponsorship package, hoping they'll read it, see something they love, and send you money. Also, I have a secret for you. I have sold tens of millions of dollars in sponsorship without a sponsorship proposal. In other words, I went straight into a discovery meeting, did good discovery, agreed on an outcome, agreed on activations, and instead of sending a sponsorship proposal that nobody asked for, I just sent them a sponsorship agreement, a contract for them to sign, which then triggered an invoice, and then away we went. A sponsorship proposal is actually not required for sponsorship, and yet most sponsorship seekers won't even talk to a brand until they've built a giant sponsorship package full of assumptions and grids without ever talking to a sponsor first. This is a big mistake. Go and talk to your prospects and find out what they're interested in. If they want a proposal, ask them what you should include in that proposal. Build something custom, and then only if they ask for one, should you create something for them. One of the best ways to offer value to your sponsors is to track everything. Track your open rate on emails. Track your click-through rate on emails. How many people actually downloaded the thing that you sent them from the sponsor or used the coupon or engaged with the social media post? How many people actually attended your event if it's event-based sponsorship you're doing? How many web visitors? What pages did they go to? You want to track absolutely everything you've promised your sponsors so that you can prove to them that you actually delivered on what you said and that they received return on investment. The reason for this is simple. You're tracking data so that you can use the most valuable tool to every sponsorship property on earth, the fulfillment report. The fulfillment report is an opportunity for you to show off how incredible your opportunity was. You want to be able to prove to your sponsors exactly what you delivered, where you over delivered, and you want to show them proof that you delivered. The fulfillment report is the most valuable thing you can offer a sponsor. And once you've delivered the fulfillment report, invite your sponsor to give you feedback. Frankly, it makes no difference if you think it went really well, if your sponsor disagrees. Find out what your sponsor thought went well, find out what they thought didn't go well, what they would improve, how they wish you would have acted differently, and maybe now that they've engaged with you, what assets they wish they had purchased. Asking them for feedback so that they can co-create future sponsorship opportunities is so incredibly valuable. It starts with tracking data, leads to a fulfillment report, and then you have to ask them for feedback. Those three things in that order, so incredibly valuable to your sponsors. I would love to know from you what your biggest takeaway from this video was. Drop it down below in the comments and let me know what's the one thing you're going to do differently. And it would really mean a lot to me if you gave me a thumbs up on the video hit the subscribe button and don't forget to hit the bell icon so that you never miss another video. And most important of all, remember the sponsorship proposal does not make the sale. You do good luck out there.